And so I'm in a parking uh, lot right now on the public Wi-Fi through our internet service pr provider, but, but it's still not really working that good. So crazy. I hit record so I can at least get your face so people don't think I'm like bullshitting. Like I really got Donald Gasson Jr. on the joint. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> hey, they be like, hey, that wasn't him, oh, man. That don't sound goodness. like him. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, let's try to let's try to um the yeah, audio, the like, phone one. Man, target. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll tap, I'll tap right back in. Okay. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing, man? How are you doing? I, I'm I'm super pumped, super excited. Um, this morning was great. Let, let can can I share some notary stuff with you guys real quick? Can I share some notary stuff, some some gems, some 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 fire, some fire? So as you guys know, like I, I've been kind of broadcasting it. Uh, this month was kind of slow. It started off really really slow for for our, our company. Um, just because, you know, we had a lot of things going on at the same time, but, um, I want, I want you guys to keep in mind something. I don't care what job you have, what you're doing. If you want to be a high performer in, <clears throat> in different areas of your life, you're going to have to be a high performer in everything you do in life, everything. I'm talking about everything, everything, everything. The reason why I say that is this. There's so many times like we might be in a job, right? And the job we're, we're feeling unappreciated. We're feeling, um, you know, we're getting looked over from promotions. We're look, being looked over. Um, we're, we're not quite respected, but so what we tend to do, this is a defense mechanism, is basically saying like a relationship, I'm not going to give you all of me. I'm not going to perform to this extreme high level because you're not giving me all of you, right? So we start to pull back and we start to pull back, we start to pull back to the point where our efforts become very mediocre and it becomes very average. Now, who do you think is hurting from that situation? Us or the person? We're actually the ones that is hurting from the situation because we are, how they would say, dumbing down our efforts and our genius and our greatness to appease or to be on the same level as somebody else that doesn't have the qualifications to perform on that high level. So I wanted to employ you guys to, I don't care if you're at a job that you do not like, give it 100% of everything you got. Everything, I mean like just outperform anything and everybody. Because when it's time for you to make that leap of you becoming 100% entrepreneurship, you will be able to trace back to that point where you are in an unfavorable, position, right? An unfavorable situation, and you are able to outperform and perform at a high level there. So when you do become that full-time entrepreneur, you'll be able to tap into that optimum level. It's going to be much, much easier for you when it's time for you to execute and roll out new plans. Again, this month, it started off really slow, it was it was it was a bit scary, you know, because we got we got we got a lot of things going on, and there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of money that goes out. So when a lot of money goes out and not enough money comes in, you're you you know you're being a you're being a crunch. So me and my team sat down and we we devised a plan and we were like, look, this shit ain't gonna come to us like that. We can't be passive. We can't just sit back and hope that sales come through. We can't sit back and hope that somebody is gonna call the, you know, call our phone number and say, hey, I need a notary. We have to be actively out there. We have to be pushing our efforts, pushing our time. And I am glad to say that from our sales from last year, we literally, today is the 22nd of March. We, right now we have tripled 
what we did last year, tripled, tripled. And this was all done within one week. Within one week, we were able to triple our sales because we have like aggressively went after it. Yeah, did we piss a couple of people off? Absolutely, absolutely we piss people off. Some people say, why are you promoting this shit again? Or, oh boy, that's all you're doing is selling. Or, you know, this and that, and why, why are your prices this? Look, we were on a mission. We were on a mission. We were like literally in survival mode, at least I was. I was in survival mode where I was like, dude, if I, if I don't do something and I don't, because I am the CEO, I am the leader of, of, of my organization. If I don't do something now, the doors, are, the doors look like it's going to close real soon. And I'm proud to say that we have gone through that storm, but it, it takes that consistent effort, that consistency of performing at a high level to do what the other notaries aren't willing to do. I was out there doing notarizations at 9.30 at night. I kid you not, I was taking phone calls at 11 o'clock because I was like, oh, no, nah, I'm not going out like no sucker. I'm not going to go out. There. If this resonates with you, man, type in one. Type in one if this, <laughs> this hits home with you, man. Because it was serious. It was serious this year, this month. I was like, I was panicking, man. I ain't even gonna lie. I was panicking for a, for a hot second. I was like, yo, like, like something got to give. Something got to give. And it all comes down to, and I'm not even gonna lie to you, it comes down to sales and marketing. It really does come down to sales and marketing. When they say, hey, pick yourself up by your bootstrap, that bullshit, that bullshit that they tell you, what they, they're missing a key ingredient. You can't pick yourself up by your bootstrap if you do not have a high income skill. I repeat, you cannot pick yourself up by your bootstrap if you do not have a high income skill. If you do not have to sell and acquire new customers and market yourself for to attract new customers, what are you gonna pick up yourself by the bootstraps from? Customer service? Huh? Like, like really, if you're hot, if your skill is customer service. Your business is suffering because a lack of sales that is coming in, a lack of funding and, and income coming in. How can you possibly pull yourself out of that pit with customer service? Don't you need customers in order to have customer service? You have to have customers in order to have great customer service. So many times we are focused on the wrong things. Like branding. Nobody gives a shit about your logo. Newsflash, they really don't. Your logo is like any other logo out there. It's what you do behind that logo. What The type of service, the type of value, the type of problem you're solving behind that logo is what makes your logo significant. Nobody gives a shit about your logo. Nobody cares about your customer service until they actually became a customer. That makes sense? We, we, we're, we're, we're focused on, gotta get my business incorporated. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I didn't get my business incorporated until three years after I was a notary. I was, I generated, I said, look, I, first of all, I have to see if I like this business first before I start spending thousands of dollars to get things incorporated, business cards, logos. This, so, that shit is easy to get uh, your business incorporated, finding logos and, and doing the business cards and letterhead. That shit has nothing to do with getting sales and, and actually doing business. That's fun foo-foo shit as, as far as I'm concerned. I got a business head with a folder and a pen that has my company name on it. Who cares? How are you getting customers to your business? When you ever, when whenever you look at that show, The Shark Tank, right? And 
there's usually one question that they really want to know. How much did you make, dude? How much money did you, how much money did this business produce? They don't care about, oh, look, look at the big, beautiful display in the background. Oh, they brought out a little puppy. How cute. Fuck all that. How much money did your business make? That's what the sharks are. Whenever you see the shark tank and they start writing things down, it's usually it has to go back to money. Lord have mercy. Pay attention to this and pay attention to this closely. Follow the yellow brick road. How many of you guys remember? How many of you guys remember Wizard of Oz? Type in two if you remember the movie Wizard of Oz, please. I, I want to make a correlation so you never forget this. Shout out to Melinda. Shout out to Mim Mirak. I like that name. That's dope. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, ben Brown, what's up, baby? Um, okay, so you guys remember. Wizard of Oz. Do you know the, orig the origination of that movie? The purpose of that movie was to send a message. I believe it was around World War II or something. Follow the yellow brick road meant follow the gold. That's what it really meant. That was the message behind the actual movie. Follow the yellow brick road meant follow the gold. He was communicating to politicians and uh, uh, aristocrats of you want to know where this country is going follow the money follow the gold follow that and then you will be able to have more of a clear direction of where your business needs to go the people that are going to suffer in this this covid stimulus economy borderline the market is going to crash real estate market is going to crash is the one that took their eyes off the ball with the, where the money is going as you guys can see clearly that there's a there's being a transfer of wealth going on right now right there's a transfer of wealth that is going on right now um let me see i just want to make this the spotlight there's a transfer of wealth that is going on right now right and in that transfer of wealth People are getting all of this money. They're going to get their uh, their Roku uh, Roku televisions. They're going on elaborate vacations. They're doing all of this stuff, right? Nobody's really investing back into their business. They're buying new vehicles. They're doing all of this stuff. If you can foresee what is going to be happening, like, hey, if all of these people are losing their jobs, right? They're trying to sustain the economy with stimulus money, which eventually they, they're printing out money like, like wildfire right now, right? They're printing out all this money. Eventually, they're going to stop. Unemployment is going to go on a rise, right? The people won't be able to invest in stocks, real estate, all of this stuff. It's almost in inevitable that there's going to be a market crash. Just like in 2008, the only difference between 2008 and now is because they were doing a lot of fraud, especially with notaries. It was a lot of, like here in Chicago, a lot of the notaries went to prison. Okay, let's see if we could get uh, Don Juan here. He said he's on the phone. I'm on the phone, bro. Let me see how to get you on here. Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. Multi pin. All right, Don Donald, can you hear me, bro? Um, uh, I never did the phone thing like that. You guys know how to do this, <laughs> do the phone. I've never done the phone thing before. 
I like literally have no clue where they even start. I'm the 407 number. You can unmute the phone. How do you do that? In the meantime, while I'm figuring that out, ladies and gentlemen, um, let me know if you guys are brand new to the notary game. If you're brand new to the notary game, type in Similac. <laughs> type in Similac. And if you have skin in the game, type in uh, Pro. Okay, we got some Similacs coming through. Similac. We got some pros on. Maroc, I, I, I saw you on the phone. It looked like you was closing deals on the phone. It looked like you was closing deals on the phone. Yes. No, we got some pros in the house. Okay. It's at 407. Hold on. All right, I, I hit uh, unmute, Donald. I don't know if you can talk or not. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Hey, can you hear me? Oh, there's a hell of an echo. It's got some feedback. I can hear you, though. All right, can you hear me now? Much better, much better. Can you guys hear Perfect. him? Type in one if you can hear Donald, everyone. Type in one if you can hear Donald. Woo! All right. I'm, I'm, I'm jacked right now, dude. I, I just have my quad espresso, my, my, my Starbucks. I'm jacked. Uh, type in one if you can hear Donald, please. OK, everybody can hear you. All right, let's get it. Crack it. Unfortunately, we could not get Donald on the video side of things, but we have him on the audio. So peace, peace, peace. This is your international sales and marketing hitman, your humble hip hop sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? Yes, sir. So hey, wanna... look, I'm on, I'm on the phone. Uh, I'm on the phone hotspot now, so okay. we can do a video if we, if we need to. Oh, it's up to you, bro. Let's do it. Hey, man, look, let's do it. You done, you done have me all over Instagram and doing flyers and stuff. I hey, can't, man. I can't I'm, disappoint I'm, now. I'm put you out there, man. Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> let's do oh. it, bro. Uh, all right. Cool. There we Boom. go. There we go. What's up, man? <laughs> I love this, man. I, I got to tell you guys, man, I'm loving the notary war room. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I didn't, uh, I didn't know I would have this much fun doing it, um, but it's been really, really cool. So I, I'm, I'm proud to announce that this gentleman that you see right here, this is actually the voice, like for those that ha have bought the Rise of the Smart Notary Audible book, which actually hit number one new release. You seen that, right? I know I sent that to you, right, Donald? Yeah, man, that was big. That was big, really big. It hit number one new release on Amazon. I mean, it 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 beat some big names. And this is the voice. This is the man right here that narrated the whole entire book, man. Like, so introduce yourself, brother. Man, it's I'm I'm really honored, man. Like, I'm I'm really honored because I know your uh your story your hustle your grind and so like to see you now come into this space of uh of um live content and content and and you know uh seeing the audiobook do what it's done man like it's, it's dope but anyway so uh my name is donald gaston jr man i'm also known as donald the voice uh i am a uh husband of one dad of one 
Uh, but uh, full time, man, voice. You said over, a husband and wife. Uh, talent. And so, hey, man, you know, hey, man, these, these days you got to be a little, a little more specific. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> okay. um, but, um, but yeah, man. So, uh, you know, I've actually been doing voiceover now for full time, almost two years. Mm. Uh, did it on the side for for eight years. And uh, I, I got a chance to hear a little bit about what you were talking about, man, as far as um, sales and marketing and logos and, you know, and, um, you know, making your business entity legal and how whenever you pull a trigger and you make it your main thing, yeah, uh, it's time for you to really show what you're made of. And so indeed, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to kind of talk to you about that journey. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it's going to be with you. Woo, Brother Vilar, let's, let's Vilar, get it. Let's get What's this, up, man? man. Let's get What's it. What's up, man? Okay, so let's, let, let's get right into it. Okay, what did you do before you started doing voiceover? What, yeah, what so like? for, yeah, for, for almost nine years, I was a, uh, a middle school teacher. Um, and really? so I came out of, out of college, yeah. Came out of college with a with a psychology degree, and then I went went and got a master's in um in family and youth ministries, and so pretty much that's like a uh, a combination of of a youth uh, a youth minister slash you know what I'm saying like nonprofit uh, teacher if you will, and so it kind of combined like both of those worlds, and so I found myself uh, after three years of doing some nonprofit work here in Orlando, I found myself uh, teaching man at a at a private uh, school here in Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. um where my average class size was about 13 kids <laughs> and um I really enjoyed it man I enjoyed it a lot but I found myself in 2018 like okay um there has to be something different um I like it I'm enjoying it but mm -hmm. I know that there's a whole lot more in me and so I have been doing voiceover on the side for like I said eight years Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what I'm saying, like, you know, I, it, it will pull in an extra, you know, in between 15 to 20 grand a year, you know, what I'm saying an extra, you know, 1500 1700 bucks a month. Some months it was, you know, up, upwards of two to three grand. But I was like, you know what, if I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it, you know, and I'm going to live a life that is um, comfortable, you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. where you have a salary coming in yeah. benefits, you know, what I'm saying you kind of have your, your plan of like, you know what, my daughter's going to go to school here. We bought our home, you know what I'm saying? Like here, like in, in the area, like literally 10 minutes away from, from the school. And so things were kind of chugging along, man. We kind of had our, our plan in place, but um, I really had to face, man, you know what? If I don't do it now, uh, I'm not going to do it. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to look myself in the mirror knowing that I had an opportunity to really better myself. And and I was scared, you know what I'm saying? And so long story short, I resigned from teaching in 2018 I went back in 2019 because I was scared. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, it's a scary thing. A hundred percent, man. And so, um, so I went back for another year. And that last year, honestly, Tiger, man, that, that last year was tough, man, because I knew that my time was up and I knew that it was time for me to transition in, into what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. But um, but I was afraid and I and I overthought the process and I didn't really truly believe that that I could do it. You know what I'm saying? And so that, that really turned into like having a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, um, a lot of anger. Cause like, whenever you know yeah. that like you should be doing something else, um, you could be angry at people or, you know, frustrated or whatever the case Very is, but true. it's nothing like knowing that, yo, like this is your fault. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, so yeah, man, put a trigger. Glad you said uh, that. Uh, let, let me ask you that yeah. before, before we uh, unpack the rest. A lot of entrepreneurs, deal with high level, you know, especially, you know, high performance, you're going to deal with a lot of high level of anxiety, stress, yes. you'll wind up taking it out on your loved ones, right? How did you deal with that? You know, because <laughs> notaries on here, like the notaries on here, I'd like to consider them like the notary 300, right? Like you remember the movie 300 with the Spartans and everything. Mm -hmm. So I like to consider everybody that comes to the notary war room, like we're ready clack clack let's go right we're ready to yeah. put in work yeah and sometimes they're going through a high level some people are in real estate where they have to deal with these loan closings and printing out documents and running to all these different places mm -hmm. and it can get very yeah. stressful how did you deal with your stress anxiety and and you know family life at the same time oh man yeah so that's where that's where the story gets interesting so um, like I said, man, like I was, I was afraid 
And I think that fear drove me into a place where I tried to recreate my results faster. Mm. So I, you know, I had a couple, a couple of credit cards that had high interest rates and I started buying courses and buying equipment and, you know, paying for advertising and stuff like that, because I thought that, that the results was something that was going to be a key that I could like turn and it will be, you know what I'm saying? Like kind of like, almost like the magic bullet, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like if I just get this one thing, then that'll unlock the results. Right. And the results were already there. Right. Like I said, I have been pulling in, you know what I'm saying? 1800 bucks a month extra. You know what I'm saying? That was kind of just like our spent our little extra spending money. Mm -hmm. So the proof of my actual talent, you know what I'm saying? Me being able to do it was there. I just had to double down and really be, be able to do it full time. Mm -hmm. that was me doing it maybe on average 15 to 20 hours a week you know okay. what i'm saying and it's like bro like what would happen if you literally worked this thing 65 70 hours a week where you where you audition like somebody would audition where you where you actually like put yourself out there and you actually market it like someone who's in business okay so to get back to the to the, the main answer is this man the way that i dealt with it was i spent more <laughs> i spent more now the issue was this, was that, you know, up, up until this point, my, my wife and I were completely debt free, like no credit card debt, no consumer debt, no, no car debt, no nothing. The, the, nice. the only debt we had was, was our mortgage up, up until this point. So in about like a, a, a 12 to 15 month time span, mm -hmm. I racked up about $20,000 in, in credit card debt, which, which, which set us back. So to answer your question, the way that I dealt with it was one. I was operating in fear, but my fear drove me to go back on a value system that 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 I really found out later really was like the key to my, to my freedom, right? Mm. I think that a lot of entrepreneurs, um, they don't know how much it takes just to live. Like what's going to cover your bare necessities? Okay. Because then your business isn't going to be put in a place where it's like, yo, if I don't make this, you know what I'm saying, this, this, this sale, this commission, you know what I'm saying? My life is going to be off or we're not going to be able to eat or, you know what I'm saying? I like, that's a different kind of pressure. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't talk about that, man. Like if you are in a situation where just the pressure of that, yeah. of you having to just like be able to, to pay for your necessities, it's contingent upon your business. I think that it, that it adds a lot of anxiety and a lot of pressure that I feel like is unnecessary, but man, oh man, if you are free and clear, yeah. And literally like what you make is able to cover your expenses and then you can really get creative. Okay. Like how do I now scale this? Now you can, now you can come from a more, I won't say pure place, but, but your, your intentions are more like, it's just more clear because it's not tied to the result, but you can focus on the process. You know what I'm saying? You can really become obsessed with the process. And I look at how, yo, in my first year of business, once we cleared out that debt, mm -hmm. And honestly, you know, my marriage suffered because of that, you know what I'm saying? And and, and grateful to the day, like, you know, we're, we're together, you know what I'm saying? Things, yeah. things are intact. But bro, like we, we went through a period where it was like, it was looking a little shaky. It was, yeah. it, was, it was looking really shaky. And so to your point, man, like a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, th their friendships suffer, their relationships suffer, their, their health suffers. And I feel like, man, in order to really come to business in a place where you're really able to serve people well and offer a lot of value, where people feel like, yo, like, wow, this person is really over delivering. I feel like you have to take care of yourself first. And I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, including myself at one time, we don't know what's wrong because we're so focused on the grind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think a lot of times the grind is attached to really not knowing what it takes for us to just have our needs taken care of. And then now we can really focus on the art of the business. Does that, does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. And it, it's funny that you say that because when before I made that leap, so like my, my wife is a teacher, right? Um, was a teacher and um, double masters and all of this other stuff. And she, me, I was, I was more of that, how, how can you say like, like a Viking when it came to like business, right? Uh, give me the mallet, crush the head. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, uh, where's the food? Like, where's the buffalo and dinosaur for me to just kill and bring to the family? And it wasn't until, you know, she was like, hey, if you're going to be doing this full time, you're going to have to budget, right? And it wasn't a t like, I was thinking my budget was something crazy. But when I really got down to the brass tax of thing, I really didn't need that much to live on for, for me, my wife and the family, right? So I'm like, hold up. There you go. Like, that's it? And then we, there so go, just like what you did, we started knocking down the debt first. 
because we didn't want that extra stress plaguing into, because when you're in a desperate situation, <laughs> you start taking advantage of people, right? Um, so right. didn't want to do that. I've understood it, rolled it out, and then eventually quit the job and then was able to, you know, start doing the way, the way I do business now. It's like, hey, if you get it, great. If you don't get it, it's okay too. That's no problem. We got to keep trucking. So let me ask you this question though. The fear. Now, now this is something I believe that a lot of us do not unpack enough because yeah. what, whatever your situation is, wherever you grew up in life, I know I grew up in a, in a very tough neighborhood um, in Brooklyn, New York around the eighties when crack um, hit, hit my neighborhood. My brother was addicted to crack. It, I saw the effects of it. it. It tore families apart. So I have in my own mind the, the fears that I go through, right? Yeah. What do you feel that was your fear that was inhibiting you that make that actually made you run back to the job, right? Yeah. And then say like, just say right, just say right. It, like I need to get out of my own head to build this kingdom, this empire. Yeah. What do you think that fear was? Yeah, so I think a lot of my fear was tied to um, my identity being wrapped up in my work. Mm. And especially, you know, I mean, men, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we're, we're you know, like we're created to to go hunt and, and, and get it done, right? Now, that's the language that I give to it now. But I look at, man, like, wow, a lot of my experience of fear was like, wow, okay, I don't want to leave this teaching gig because I find a lot of significance in this. And like I said, my marriage at the time was not the best. So it was like, yo, my work became a, a distraction from the personal development that I, that I had to do just on some man stuff. Like I really had to man up in a lot of ways mm -hmm. that, that I didn't want to face, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And I think that a lot of times, especially for, for men and business success, you know, we can say, yo, like, if, if I can get this amount of money or if I can grow my business to this particular point, then, then that means this about me or, or, or that say something about like who I am mm. now to a degree, like that is true. Like game, no game. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you, you don't just build something by being a scrub. Right. But I think that whenever we exchange, like who we are, like internally for external results and we say, yo, like I, I am this thing, then that's whenever things become really, really weird. Right. So the fear for me was, I don't know how to let go of this of this identity that I've had since you know what I'm saying like since I came out of college as like this this servant teacher dude you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying that's tied to you know being being well connected in, in, in the community you know what I'm saying like being being this this great teacher yada 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 yeah I don't like I don't know how to let that go and now just be a regular dude building a business who's a husband and a dad like it, it really messed with me. Like, you're like, like, what is like, who am I now? Who am I? You know what I'm saying? And so I think the fear for me was really a identity crisis. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of had to go back to like, yeah, like, first of all, bro, like, yo, just, just know that like, that you are just like created to be somebody who, who has like an infinite amount of potential. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because of like, like literally like you being alive, like you have the potential to be whatever you set your mind to, right? Like, let's start there. Right. And then it was like, okay, then the rebuilding process was able to begin was, okay, like, all right, cool. So like my value isn't tied up into what I do, but it's really tied into who I am. And I'm going to bring whoever I am to whatever I do. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm a, on the inside, a person who is, like you said, bro, a person who is trying to get over on people and I'm insecure and whatever, like that's going to come out, whether I'm a yeah. teacher yeah. or whether I'm, a, you know, a businessman or a businesswoman, you know what I'm saying? And so um, and so, yeah, man. So for me, the fear was tied to identity for sure. So when, when, when you discovered and you knew the root of it, because I suffered with that too, yeah. I said, these jobs did a number on me yeah. because like I, I completely had an employee mindset, right? 100%. And you cannot really grow a team in, in a business with that employee mindset because you're, you're, I guess like for us, we serve, right? Which comes easy right. for us because we want to be a humble servant to whoever right. we're working for. But what happens when you're working for yourself? Like there's this right. conflict, like I'm the boss, but then I'm an employee. I'm a boss and I'm an employee. And it's like, they're fighting with each other. And, and 
So how, how did you get past it? Was there certain books that you were reading? Was there certain programs you were listening to? Audio books, coaching? Yeah. Like, how were you getting past that? Yeah. So one, one of the biggest things that I had to dive into was, um, well, for one, I, I went back to a book, Think and Grow Rich is like, it's just known as like the, the book of all books in terms of subconscious mind and personal development, right? Mm -hmm. I went back to that and I really began to like, really like journal and sit with like, okay, like what's like the program that's like playing in my, in my mind about just about like what it means to be like, just to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, like what, like, what is it right back to identity? Right. So then I think the next thing that I had to really journey, like journey through was this was, okay, I need to figure out, okay, like what, what is my business going to be? Cause it's kind of like voiceover, you know what I'm saying? Narration, like commercials, yada, yada, yada. But like, what's, what's at the heart of that business at the heart of that business is communication. Like, are you able to, whether I do a voiceover or not, are you able to, to properly communicate a message? Right. Are you able to, to like, do you really respect that as far as like an art form? Right. So then I went into, um, a book that is called, uh, the power of the subconscious mind. Um, hmm. Dr. Joseph, uh, can't remember, can't remember his name right now, his last name, but in the book, man, he talks so much about how obviously, you know, thoughts, thoughts are things, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or things are thoughts. Right. Mm -hmm. And I begin to see how we're like, wow. Um, in business, I'm not, I, I'm not going to be able to go from an employee mindset to a business mindset, unless I begin to really see myself as the person who generates like the, the provision, you know what I'm saying? And so sometimes provision isn't, isn't necessarily money, but it, it's, it's a connection, right? Mm -hmm. Um, kind of like our, our OG is Andre Hatchett, right? Andre yeah. C. Hatchett. And Shout out to Andre. you know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, in my first couple months of business, Dre and I connected just like through like a, a mutual group that we were in. And he was like, Hey man, like, do you, do you do, uh, do you do videos? And I was like, you know, I mean, I, I kind of have some video editing experience, but like my, my main thing is voiceover, but I began to remember all oh, like, wow, I'm a communicator. So if you hmm. take my ability to communicate and now all I have to learn is the skill of video editing, hmm. it's just something, it's just another skill that I had to learn. But, but like in my heart of hearts, I'm a communicator. I've taught for, not doggone nine years before that i've done youth ministry you know what i'm saying so, so like i'm used to speaking and you know and and sharing stuff so but like in terms of like the actual channel of communication you get you, you you just give me the tools and i'm gonna be able to bring out the message or whatever i gotta bring out right and so i think for me man like a big thing was being held accountable to that to that to that skill set because a, a lot of us think that like yo like i'm i'm a i'm a notary or like this is what i do but the reality mm -hmm. is that like you take a lot of stress off of people. You know what I'm saying? Like the fact yes. that you get a chance to show up every single day and you are the conduit through which like they get a chance to, whether they're like closing on a house or they have a really important document that that, that they, need, they need to be notarized. You're the person who actually like relieves that stress of the legality. You know what I'm saying? Like the pride, like you, you are the bridge builder. You know what I'm saying? And so you just happen to be the person who has all of the the, the legal knowledge and, you know, and, and, and everything else that a notary brings to the table. But when you begin to see yourself as like, wow, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bridge builder and I show up as a person who takes this, like whatever that important juncture is that the person is at that needs your service, like you embody that, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And so I think, man, I, I think so many times we can be like, oh, okay, like, you know, I, I do real estate, or, but it's like, no, bro, like because of like, of how we're created, man, like we, we have a lot of power, you know what I'm saying? And so right. how we choose to define ourselves, man, it can really help us or, or it can hurt us, you know what I'm saying? So that was a long answer, but I think- No, no, I, I, I love think, it. I love I it, think man. In, like for me in, in summation, man, it was like, yo, like, bro, who are you? And then are you being held accountable to your ability? I, 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 accountability, if you break it down, is like accounting for your ability. And so for me, in, in a lot of ways, bro, like I was not accounting for my abilities in the past, but I was like, you know what? I really had to start to account for, for, for my ability. And a big part of that was what I was taking in and how I saw myself. So You know, there's something I, you said that I love, man, is that- you, yeah, on on the surface layer, narration, uh, voiceover, and all, you know, as these other titles that's attached to it, right? right? But you were able to look a few levels deeper and understand that it stems from communication. There you go. 
Now, if I'm if I call myself a great communicator, it is my job to look at every medium, right? Where it comes to making videos, that is a way to communicate with the audience, whether it's a voiceover, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a commercial, whether it's a TV show trailer, all of these areas of communication, I have to explore them in order to be more well-rounded, wouldn't you say? That's right, 100%. And I think, and I think that that requires a level of humility of being like, I I don't know, and I have to be willing to to pay my dues, right? So you talked about the book earlier, right? That we that we worked on together, mm -hmm. and one of the things was like, as I as I listen back, I'm like, this is this is pretty good, but like, I'm not where I was then as a narrator. Mm -hmm. I've, I've grown, and. I think this is this is the number one thing that I feel like hold a lot a lot of people back. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to be to be critiqued. They're afraid to be critiqued or they're afraid to fail, right? And so by the time you and I connected on, on the book tiger, like I had already done it up until that point, like three or four different different audiobooks, right? But after that point, I've done almost another 13 or 14. And so what I had to realize was to your point no matter what medium I'm using in terms of like my, my skill set, I have to respect the fact that a message is, be, is, is, is being communicated. So whether we're talking notary and the history of notaries, you know what I'm saying, that you allude to in the book, uh, whether we're talking about the systems and processes that you had to set up as a notary in the book, I have to say this in a way that is, and again, it can be narrated, but it, if I don't say it a certain way, the listener isn't going to be able to hear it a certain way and therefore it's going to be a block and yeah. what tiger intended for the message to be i'm not going to be doing my best to help that to, to come across you know what i'm saying yeah so the communication piece man is so 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 important 100 and, and i'm proud to say like right now with sales we we've already sold 115 bro wow 115 co uh copies of so your your voice is like just all over the place right now, That's right? Awesome. <laughs> Which awesome, is bro. awesome. Yeah. You know, I um I always tell people like I'm not a notary, like I solve problems. That's what I do. I just happen my medium is this damn stamp. That's right. Right? But yeah. it's we as a notary, we we tend to brush off or or there is this how can I say man? There's this expectations for a notary, right? Yeah, yeah. What they expect you to be so cookie cutter professional, like I can't curse, like fuck, 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 fuck. Look, listen, I just said it, right? But oh my God, he's a notary, he cursed. Somebody report him to the secretary of state. <laughs> <laughs> no, like we should still be able to be ourselves. The right. people that are calling you that need your help they're not calling a robot. They're calling, they want to talk, there's, there's a, a problem that they need solved. They need another human being on that phone to talk to them, be like, like literally, when somebody calls my phone, I will say, I will tell them, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. I'm asking them because I want to see what they see. Yeah. Like, what is the problem? My mom is in the hospital. She just had a stroke. We need the power of attorney because the doctor won't allow us to access the medical files and stuff. You know what I mean? I want to be there. Put me in that place. That way I can handle and, and, and steer you in the right direction, even if it's not with my company. That's right. I'll direct you to somebody else. There you go. There you you go. know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I think it's, it's great because when you look beyond the surface layer of, of these titles, like the notary, a notary signing agent or a voice over a narrator or a notary public, and you look deeper into it yeah. and feel that core, yeah. kaboom, yeah. magic happens. 100%, 100%. Yeah, no, man, you I mean, said you've the... been doing 30, so I'm sorry, go ahead. Keep nah, going, I mean, I, I had I, a question. I, I, you said, you said something that's, that, that's so important, man. Like whenever you humanize business, um, I'm just convinced, man, that like, your earnings are going to skyrocket because then you take the pressure off, man. You just do. I mean, yes, there's systems and processes and, you know, and we have to market and all those different things, man. 
But when you realize that, like, yo, like, on the other side of this transaction is like, is a person. Yeah. And when people, like you said, when people feel that in their gut, bro, like closing. Yeah. Closing, closing comes easy. Like, it, like when you see, like, yo, like, okay, yo, bro, like, or says, hey, like, I want to help you win. I want to, I want to see this like done for you, even if I'm not the person to receive the payment for it. Can you like think about it's the number genuine. of referral? Yeah, it's genuine. You know what I'm saying? So people people will, will refer you out all day. You know what I'm saying? Like you I, I'll, I'll give you a, a story that happened advertising. today, actually. Yeah. To, this happened today. Now, I've been marketing my business as the power of attorney experts, right? Notary experts, because that that's where I get the most fulfillment is actually helping families navigate through a lot of this bull crap that's going on. Absolutely. So a lady called me this morning. And she said, you guys do power of attorneys, right? I said, yes. She said, um, I want your services. And I said, okay, let me give you a price. I don't care what the price is. I want you guys to handle it. That comes from like you are doing what you're supposed to do. 100%, man. Now, can I charge the lady more? Hell yeah. But I, I, that wasn't my concern. It was like, all right, let, let's figure out what's going on with you first. Right. Let me show you what, why we're the best at this shit. Right. And right. she was just like, I kid you not, bro. I send her the invoice. She paid that thing in like five seconds. Yeah. She did not care Yeah. because why her pain was much greater than the the actual money, the money wasn't shit. It's so I want bro. you guys to understand this. Everybody that's on this notary war room right now, when the pain is great, the money is insignificant. That's right. It's like needing heart surgery. And then you're like, and you're trying to figure out how much you're going to pay this doctor that has a 99% a success rate to work on your heart. And you're like, you know what? The guy that got a 43% rate, he, he He's a little bit cheaper though, you know. I might want to go with him instead. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may, you may want to rethink that. You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, don't ration out that type of stuff. When the pain is greater, it, it it's like, all right, put on your fireman hat, your fireman suit. Let's let's go right into the fire and see what's going on, and let's extinguish it. One hundred percent, man. I man, I I love it. I love it. I think I think that that's uh, am, am, am I still here? Yeah. 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 You said, okay, here, cool. bro. yeah, man. Like it's, um, you know, what you said, like people, people's pain points. I think that, um, again, man, like we dehumanize business where it's like, okay, like it, it's about whatever the service or whatever the, uh, or whatever the product is. But we know that like, it's about you changing people's state before, before somebody comes to you, they have a certain thing that they want relieved. Yeah. And Obviously, in my world, this is where like marketing can be a little manipulative. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's like if you sure. can, if you know people's pain points, bro. Like, I mean, you can, you can do well, right? Yeah. But I love what you said, man. About you know the example you gave because it's like she arrived to you ready because she's like, yo, I don't care what it takes. And then at that point, the monetary value, like you said, becomes actually it's not nothing to her. I don't think. I think it's like she's like, yo, like that's a whole lot less value to me in terms of what I'm going to get like from that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because now what I'm getting now is going to, is, is so much more of value than, than this. So of course I'll pay this in five seconds because what I'm gaining is like a, huh, it's, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air to her. Right. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, man, I mean, I, I love it, man, because we're, we're in different worlds and you know what I'm saying? In terms of like more like the media space, you know what I'm saying? You're more, you know, doing, doing what you do with, with the legalities and everything, but it's like, what, what what connects us together, man, is like it's this mutual human experience, man. And so, if you know people, bro, you can do well in any kind. And of you business. know, like like one one of the things that I liked when I was working with you is that there was it was a two step process. You didn't give me a whole bunch of shit to do, dude. <laughs> like it was like you market yourself well, right? And then when I saw you was rocking with you know our OG uh, Andre Hatchet, right? I was like, oh shit, if Andre rocks with him i'm a rock with him yeah so and then it was like you know you did not hesitate when it came to like a lot of notaries are scared to give out their prices right or 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 maybe they're afraid of giving a high price feeling that like oh my god oh my god like they're not worth it like no right 
know your value, right? 100%. Know your value. And, and you made the process so easy. I always tell people this, man. It's like, I've been in marketing for like, you know, a few, you know, almost 10 years now. And the more I do marketing, the more I realize I don't know shit about marketing. <laughs> right? So true, bro. I, I really do not base my marketing off, off of the ideas and thoughts that I have in my own head. I wait for the world to tell me what they want. Yeah. You know, it's like, if you say, hey, if I put out a masterclass, like I just did a masterclass last month, power of attorney masterclass. If nobody bought it, then I'd be like, man, this is, yeah, there's this two thing, things. People it. who don't want it, yeah, or I'm not marketing it correctly. Mm. It's sold out, right? So I was like, okay, there is a need for it. Let me roll it out again. Yeah, yeah. So that is the best way to find out is like feedback, like you said earlier, feedback, the criticism, ask for it, ask yeah. for it. Look for the person, that, the person that shoots you down and chews you out is giving you the most valuable information. Yeah, yeah. Because they're actually taking that time mm -hmm. out to, to, to tear you. To actually critique you, right? So, yes. and this is, this is so fun because you know, if you if you go to the the audio audiobook listing on Audible, you're gonna see a review. And the lady's like, the narrator is a little a little monotone. He should have reread the 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 thing multiple times, yada yada yada. But it's like, if from from her perspective, that's true, right? Now I can take that two ways. I can be like, yo, well, the whole project was a, was a wash, or I can say, okay, how can I get better? Like, what was it about my, my delivery where she felt like I was I was more monotone now. Like we just said, hundred and how many people have I, I, I bought the audiobook? One hundred fifteen. So, so okay, one hundred and fifteen other people have bought it and have gained some kind of value from it, right? And, and you have other reviews under that. But I'm like, yo, okay, I'm not gonna get salty about that. But it's like, what can I learn about it? But what's so crazy is this: is that if you want to do anything publicly, it's like that's what you open yourself up to. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not a student of of that game, then like, it's it's just not for you. And that and that's his business like across yeah. the board. You know what I'm saying? It's business across the board. And so I I love that man because that having security and like you said your pricing, I think that comes with time, and I think it comes with with time because you know having done voiceover before doing it full time for for eight years, I realized mm -hmm. like wow. Um, I really didn't respect the crap to mm. charge a certain amount. I did it, right? And the more that I began to respect the crab and the more that I began to respect the people who who do amazing work, it's like, you know what, man? Like, I'm worth this because this is this is the amount of time I, I put into it. And I'm also worth this because of again of the person that you're getting. You're not just getting like, hey, yo, like down on the guy who delivers on the narration or whatever the case is. But you're getting the person who makes it an easy two-step process. You're yeah. getting a person who's like, yo, here's how things are going. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I see that the audiobook, like, hey, is, is, is it up? Or hey, do you need me to do it? Like, you're getting a full, like, A to Z, like, complete process here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so I think that with a lot of people in business, man, I think that um, sometimes we cheapen ourselves because we don't believe, like you said, that we're worth it. But then also, I don't think that we've really respected um what business is and i think that whenever you respect what business is mm -hmm. your chart your your charge accordingly because mm -hmm. you realize yo there are people who are going to be quote unquote like under me in, in terms of my price range mm -hmm. but then there are going to be some people who are pricing more than me so if i can find a medium it's really it's really respecting everybody in the game but like mm -hmm. if, if i'm the guy who's driving the price down or if or if i'm the guy who's like yo i'm gonna charge this much because i don't want to deal with yada 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 then it's like, hey, that's your choice to make. But just know yeah. that, like, that again, man, like, this is a collective experience. And so if you have a notary who's charging four times of what Tiger charges, okay, like, we have to ask why. And yeah. also, is he is he converting on that? Yeah. Or is he posturing himself to have a certain kind of clientele because he only wants one client a week? You know what Indeed. I'm saying? Indeed. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, like, why? Like, why? Oh, right? you, you cracked or, it there. Or the person who's charging less, why are they doing that? Is it because they want more or they want more volume? Or is it because, you know what I'm saying, like they just literally don't have 
the bandwidth to do excellent work to where they may have Ooh. to spend an a, a extra hour or two doing something that is more like labor intensive. You know what I'm saying? So I think, man, it's just, it's just perspective. Dude, that is, man, you just depicted my free webinar that I do every single month. I do it once a month. I always ask this question. I say, who do you want to be in the notary industry? Do you want to be Walmart or do you want to be Target? Those are two different companies. Yeah. One is more price driven, which is like you said, the one with the lower price and everything just want to do a lot of value. And then one is more value driven where you're going to get some exclusive products that you probably won't get anywhere else, but you're going to pay a premium for it. So Target wants less customers, but a higher profit margin. That's right. Versus Walmart just wants to unload as much product as possible. So, oh, you, right. that was fantastic, bro. Fan right. Listen, because I, I was, I was saying to myself, I was like, man, I'm a, I'm gonna leave it open to the universe, to the world, the way this conversation is gonna happen. I knew it was gonna be fantastic. That's but the best I, way. <laughs> this is, this is priceless information because you get to see inside of a different industry. And you can actually take that same type of business model and apply it into the notary business. And that's why we call it the notary war room. You have to look at the, all the terrains. You have to look at the hill. You have to look at the valley. You have to look in the ocean. You have to look, like when you look at the military, they're not just on the ground. They got drones. They got, you know, firefighters. I mean, you know, fighter jets. They, they're in space. They're underground. They got submarines. We have to look at everything. Look at the whole body of this thing. Right. In order to strike effectively, I love what you just said, bro. Yes, Thank sir. you so much. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. Add more. Yeah. Add more, please. So, I'm I mean, cool. So, I'm so cool. Even, though, <laughs> even even on that tiger, I would say this. I would say, yo, there is, in my opinion, now again, I'm only two years full time into this, right? So I'm I'm speaking as, as someone who's fairly new as as a full time entrepreneur. So, I'm gonna just talk real numbers. So let's say uh, teaching. You know, I pulled in no more than let's say 38 grand a year, mm -hmm. right? And my first year in full-time business, I doubled my salary. Now, here's why I believe that that happened. Mm -hmm. There was nothing off the table for me. So if uh, you go to if you go to Fiverr, I have a profile on Fiverr.com yes. to do voiceover, right? Yes. I have my retainer clients that I have monthly. I also have my audiobook clients that I'm not doing seven of those a month, but I may be doing one to two of those a month. You know what I'm saying? Which mm -hmm. which are a higher ticket because I'm putting in 30 to 40 hours total on a hour or two hour like completed project, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, especially in the age of social media and the internet, man, like the question that I'm always asking is this because I work with, you know, influencers and people who have, you know, platforms or whatever. I'm always asking, yo, okay, so your business and revenues did, let's say, you know, a half a million dollars or whatever, like some some kind of online store you have or whatever, your coaching business or whatever. But again, back to what I said at the beginning, what what is your life cost? What are your what what are your truest expenses? And in the digital world, maybe you don't have a whole lot of overhead, mm -hmm. but you're probably paying a whole lot in 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 ads, right? Um, so how much of that are you actually keeping like what's your true net like for yeah. real for real right and i'm finding that in my conversations the margins aren't aren't as large as we think that they are mm. and so i think that when people look at a notary it's like oh you only made 85 dollars for 20 minutes of your time it's like well, will we actually break this thing down <laughs> i'm actually doing i'm actually doing a little bit better in terms of my of my average transaction amount you know what i'm saying um because what i'm doing is with a doggone stamp i like stamp in my knowledge and my gas and i'm gone yeah right um and there's a lot of honor in that you know what i'm saying yeah. so i think that you know for those of you who are listening man like i just want to say you're like being encouraged because flashy sometimes uh can seem like oh like that that person's winning or they're successful yeah. But flashy don't, don't don't always mean profitable. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. And so sometimes, man, like getting down, 
like in the like in the grind, quote yeah. unquote, in the grind or doing something that's like less flat flashy, man. I think a lot of times, man, it does have a whole lot more uh, margin because there's there's something that you're doing that people don't want to do, and there's a whole lot more opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, man, that's kind of that's kind of struggling right. as, as you because talking, it, it comes down to like there 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 are notaries out there, right? <clears throat> that are doing maybe, you know, 20, 30, you know, 15, 20, 25 jobs a month. Happy, happy as hell. And then you have other notaries that are doing 120 jobs a month. Yeah, they're, the, the, the money is coming in crazy, right? Yeah. But they're freaking miserable. Right. They right. have, they, they're, it keeps spinning. It doesn't stop. They're stressed out they're you know they're they're on the brink of burnout right and they're like i gotta get out of this i gotta get out of this yeah i'm gonna piss off a lot of my clients if i pull away yeah Who, who's winning who's winning at that point is That's it the right. one doing 20 25 jobs and spends a lot of time with their family still goes on vacation and hangs out with their kids or is it the one that's making fifteen thousand dollars a month stressed out every goddamn day that's right. And doesn't have time for even themselves to eat us a, a damn sandwich. There you go, bro. There you go. There you go. Now we're not, we're not downplaying no. high, high earning, you know what I'm saying? Because it takes it, like you gotta, you gotta go get it. Right. But I think, you know, I think a theme of the conversation has been like holistic business, you know what I'm saying? Like being, being a whole person, you know what I'm saying? And, and I think that I love what you're doing, man, because um, even, even uh, hearing your story, in Andre's book, uh, the um, the altar book. I cannot remember the one. The oh, black uh, man's uh, yes. guide to the altar. The black man got the, yes. I'm like Donald. You you don't know who narrated <laughs> the book. You don't know I mean? remember. But yeah, and it's so cool, man. Like actually seeing the man and the person, like doing this thing in business because it's like wow, like that brother's winning because he found out how to be. Uh, a whole person as opposed to like you said at the beginning like coming in with the with the sludge hammer like yo let's get it you know and it's like yeah and it's just fragments flying everywhere you know what i'm saying and people are like yo like just chill out bro you're like no nah, we're gonna win it's like yo like hold on a second like there's a way to use that same tool and be more efficient you know what i'm saying so it's really dope to see you being efficient oh, i appreciate it's, it's, it man. it's really dope really cool man i I, for, I forgot i actually had an excerpt in that book yeah man yeah um, yeah, if you guys <laughs> go Plug. pick up, but go pick up the Black Men's Guide to the Altar by, by Andre Hatchett. I have an actual passage in there. I talked about our marriage, um, my marriage with my wife, and how the ups and downs we went through. And we, me and my wife, we actually separated at one time. Um, I think it was almost close to a year. Um, and you know, God. You know, God blessed us, and we, we're still going on, and we're going on 15 years now, man. Wow, bro. Right. Since, since, years, that, so since that point. Wow. That's so cool, bro. You know, so, so cool. and then, you know, two kids later. So now we have a total of three kids. Yes, but, sir. you know, it, it, it's what you want. It is what you want in this business. You get what you want. If you ask for it, don't complain once you get that shit. That's my thing. My thing is when people say, I want this, I want this, I want this, and then when they get it, they complain about that. Yeah. Don't be surprised if that, you know, not, you know, what do they call it? opportunity knocks? Yes, it looks like work. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. And that's, and that's where back to what we were talking about, it's in terms of respecting the game. It's like, yo, you can look at whoever, you know what I'm saying? A Tiger Toledo, or Andre Hatcher, whoever, like whoever, whoever you plug into, like, this person is like someone that I that I want to model myself after in this business. I would just highly encourage you like to pay that person for, for their time and be like, yo, like get give me a peek into your day. And then ask yourself, like, do you really want that? Yeah. Like, do you really want that? I mean, I've I've talked to other voiceover artists who who are knocking down, you know, half a million dollars a year in this business, and they're constantly at the, the, the they're pretty much on call by major networks i'm like okay donald knowing how how you're set up <laughs> and how yeah. much you enjoy like your your family you know what i'm saying in your in your time do you really want that bro and it's like at this season in my life 
actually, I don't think I want that in that way. Mm -hmm. But is it possible for me to learn from that and to really begin to, in my character and in my work ethic now, begin to to build some things into my business that are able to give me something like from that table? Absolutely. Yeah. But to be like, yeah, I'm going to come out of the gate first in my, my business as a millionaire. It's like, you're probably not because most millionaires have, you know, spent six figures, multiple six figures on coaching and conferences and, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, and failing, you know what I'm saying, and potentially other businesses like failing. Like, yeah. do you really want the problems? It's like, if you don't, then I, I, I would not, I would not cap like that. So stop, don't, don't cap like that. That just, that's yeah. just not, that's not cute. You know what I'm saying? So hundred percent. So everybody, this is the part where we go into the Q and A. So if you guys have any questions that you have for my man, Donald here, man, while we're chat, chopping it up, type it in the comment section. Bree, if you can drop Donald's uh, information, his voice, uh, his website, his Instagram handle, if you could drop that in there again, so everybody could stay connected with Donald. I, you know, I, I love this conversation. I could talk to you forever. You know how oh, we man. do, man. Like, oh, man. I'd be in Target and me and you chopping it up, like yeah, bouncing ideas. Yes, um, sir. Do Donald has made some trailers for me for my romance novels. For some of you guys don't know, I have romance novels. I go by the name SK Holiday. Um, and he's created trailers for that. And, it, you know, it's you can learn so much from other industries. I, I always say like, when, when you are too entrenched in your, in your industry, you may be missing out on a whole lot of opportunities or, or creativeness that's happening all around you. Yeah. Like I could go to Starbucks and learn something new from Starbucks today. That's right. Just because of the, a little, maybe a little tweak that they did and be like, oh, yeah. that was interesting. Yeah. Maybe that might work for my business. A lot of people don't know, like for Steve Jobs, right? When Steve Jobs invented um, the I, what was it, the iPhone or iTunes and stuff, the restaurant business had that years ago. Yeah. Because remember when you were putting in your order or I used to be a waiter at Olive Garden, so I know, right? I'm like, man, I was doing this <laughs> way before iTunes and iPhones and stuff. We had touch screens for everything. Yeah. So all he did was take that, that model and say, I'm gonna put it into a phone. There you go. So you can learn so much from different industries. I'll give you another example because we were talking about pricing a little bit too. That person that's making the high tier of in that industry and then the person that's making the low tier, if you want to start making more, it doesn't have to be all the way above, you know, at that level or above, but right. call that, co that um, company and find out what they're doing more than the one that's charging less. And I'll give you an example. Um, my nephew was driving his car. A brick went through his win windshield, right? Needed to get the windshield uh, fixed. He called a bunch of companies. Immediately, they were giving up the price. I'm like, oh, yeah, what kind of make, model, car you got? Okay, it's going to be $175, right? So... He wound up calling, I said, hey, call this company, which was Safe Light, right? And you've probably yeah. seen the commercials for yeah. them. Yeah, man. Bro, I kid you not, this lady <sighs> took a consultive approach with everything. I said, bro, let me tell you, she is gonna be like 10 times higher than everybody. Why? Because she positioned the company right. in a way to say, all right, well, do you have the wires that go through your windshield that actually defrost right. the snow? When, I was like, oh, I never thought of that. I got to go to the car <laughs> to look at that, right? 100%. Yeah. Is, it, is it attached to, is your rear view mirror attached to the middle or is it attached to the, so she asked so many of these questions. So almost to the point where it's like, okay, if I hire them, I know it's going to be done correctly. Yeah. My nephew had a beater, so he wound up going with the cheap people. But sure. if he valued that vehicle, like if it was like a really, really nice vehicle that he really valued, he would have went with safe light all day long. Right. all day long because yeah. she took a consultive approach versus oh make model car this is what you get yeah yeah so. yeah and guess what and yeah. both examples are okay you know what i'm saying like if that's if that's what you want to model so like, like i said before if, if you want to be a 
low ticket, high volume. That's cool. Mm -hmm. and, and that comes with some things. But also, if you want to be more exclusive, high ticket, more consultative approach, that's cool as well. But yeah. you also have to respect what comes along with both. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's spot on, bro. That's so spot on. Yeah, somebody said uh, they, they're your neighbor out there, man. Uh, <laughs> they said, hello, oh, yeah? neighbor. <laughs> oh, cool. Chat. Is that Melinda? Okay. Melinda Smith. Uh, you got and, some uh, other people here in Florida, man. So. All right. Yeah, I'm in I'm in uh, or, or, Orlando, Florida. So I'm, I'm Central Florida. Nice, nice. That's cool, Melinda. All right. Cool, cool, cool. No, bro, I wanted to thank you so much for being no on this, man. I can't wait no to doubt. edit this. Uh, we're going to put out all your information so okay. people can stay in contact with you, maybe do some commercials for, you know, there's notaries that want to roll out their own commercial, their own little, you know, trailer and stuff. Yeah, I, I've, I've used your services many times. I love it. I'm a continue. Matter of fact, Rise of the Smart Notary 2 is coming out. So you already know Let's I'm going to need. I, people it. like the consistency. I know that. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to stay yeah. consistent with it. You got oh, it, man, it's Donald again. <laughs> you got it. You got it. I'm Dude, better, you know, I'm better, I'm better and messages. improved, Donald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I've been getting messages like, I love his voice. Oh, my God. I can't believe I actually talked to Donald Gatton. Oh, that's cool, man. That's so really cool. You're a freaking celebrity and shit, dude. Hey, man, look. You know, we we are putting in the work, you know, and being and, and being consistent. And we'll we'll take what comes along with that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I appreciate Bro. I really do, man. I really, I really appreciate you, man. And I remember um, uh, watching you and uh, on Andre's uh, was it his his fifth year anniversary? Fifth year anniversary, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, I mean, like, I mean, y'all went on for like seven, eight hours, just kind of talking about old stories and stuff. And man, like, it's it's really dope to see e even over the last, I think for me, the last six months, like your evolution. Um, and I have like a, a a team behind you and stuff. Where you know, like Bree. Yeah, and, uh, I remember when, whenever she called. She was, yes, this is Mr. Toledo's assistant. I'm like, oh, 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 oh really? You gotta, really? Flexing man, a little like, bit. I'm just flexing a little hey bit. Hey man, man, look, I I love that energy because what what it shows is um, it shows growth, you know. Um, but then I also see how you take care of your people. Um, and and, and obviously, man, like you know your your growth as as a as a husband and a dad man so it's just it's just cool man like, yeah Bree, just, Bree's just a, a freaking rock star yeah, dude like like yeah. she she keep me on point with so much like shout, salute to my girl Bree. um and uh, speaking of og andre hatchet he's doing the season finale tomorrow so yeah, this is actually a like, double bro, bubble that's, that's that's big man you got yeah your, this is the double got bubble boy. we got you and then we yeah. got we're closing out the season with andre hatchet yeah. the og in the notary game man so it's like it's a double bubble and it, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm just blessed to be in this space. That's so dope, blessed man. to have great notaries on here that I can serve and offer this knowledge. And this, for me, I'm already wealthy. You know what I'm saying? I'm already rich. I'm already yeah. wealthy because I'm doing exactly what I want to do when I want to do it. Nobody can't tell me any different. Yeah. What are you going to say? Because I don't have a billion dollars in my account. Like, I'm already wealthy. Right, right. I'm right. rich. I'm, I'm, I made it. Right. I made it. Yeah. So yeah. I like that energy, man. Meeting great I love people it. like yourself, man. It's contagious, Andre Hatchet, man. the Black Wealth Renaissance, you know, all these guys that were on here, the Donnie Bryants, the Renee Dentman, all these great people, tech being on here, man. Like yeah. you can't tell me I didn't make it. I made it. Hey man, and, and that's and that, that's something else I know I know we're wrapping up. That's something else that, that for me has been an honor. Um when you talk about like the Renaissance, like it's real, bro. It's real. And we're all doing it in different ways. Yeah. But for me, man, like to be able to 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 be a part of that and like to yeah. really see people like to my left and my right. And it's like, wow, people are really winning, like in a in a, and again in a holistic way, man. Like that's dope, man. That's really, really dope. So keep at it, sir. Keep at it. Yeah, I'm proud tell, of you. Tell man. people how they can find you, brother. Yeah, man. Uh donaldthevoice.com. Uh it's a website or uh on all social media uh at Donald the Voice. I think on Facebook it's um Donald.thevoice. Um I'm not highly Yeah, highly... Bree just put it on there. Donald Thanks, the Bree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a uh, highly active on, on on the Facebook tip, but I need to be more. Uh but Instagram for sure is like my my go-to choice. Um anybody who's listening. Uh, I'll give you a 25% off of any service that I provide. If you Boom. mention, 
you heard this on the notary war room, nice. uh, just say, yo, like, hey, like, shoot me an email uh, at hello at donaldthevoice.com or, or DM me, whatever the case is. Hey, Donald, what's up with that 25% off? You got it. And I'll I'll take care of you as a part of the uh, notary war room family. So you I love it. it. Because, you Saga, know, you we, could, this shit is you going use on that too. Spotify, YouTube. Google Podcasts, iTunes, yes, it's sir. going everywhere, bro. So yes, yeah, sir. appreciate yes, that, man. Thank you for uh, showing the my audience love like that, man. And yeah, blessings bro. to you, your Thanks, wife, bro. and your child, man. Thanks, I, I wish you guys the very best. Happy cash flow to everybody. You guys just tuned into the Notary War Room featuring my man, Donald Gaston Jr., the voice, the narrator behind Rise of the Smart Notary. Be on the lookout for Rise of the Smart Notary 2 Evolution. He's going to be doing the audible on that one, too. You heard?